Go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll get into the scripture. Father, as we come to stand before you once again, Lord, we pray, Father, that you would just take this lesson. Lord, that you would speak the words that you would have to be spoken. Open our hearts and our minds to receive that that you have for us, God. Lord, help us to apply it in the way that you would have us to apply it, Lord, that we could gain from it what you would have us to gain from it. Lord, I pray, Lord, as, as we open this book and we look into this word, Lord, that you would just help me to keep myself out of the way, Lord, that you help me, Lord, to put the flesh under subjection and speak only that that you would have to be spoken. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to begin in the book of Matthew in chapter 7. see God do, has prayers they want to see God answer, has things in their life they want <coughs> or are taken care of, have spiritual needs, um, have loved ones they want to see God move in their lives, whatever it is. Um, that's what we want to kind of talk about this morning. We're going to begin in Matthew chapter 7 and break in at verse 7. This is very familiar scripture. Probably nobody sitting here this morning that hasn't heard this. The Bible says, hey, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give them a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give them a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? And I want to back up into this and read that first scripture again. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And I'm going to ask you a question, and you answer for yourself, and just be honest with yourself. Um, how many of you really believe that? How many of you have been uh, in a situation or a circumstance where you asked and nothing happened? Mm -hmm. You looked and didn't find. I, I, what we need to understand a few things. Uh, first of all, when this says ask, seek, and knock, it's a continual thing. If you go back to the original language and you look at it, it's a continual thing. You keep knocking. You keep asking. You keep seeking. And listen, this is what the Word says. It shall be opened unto you. You shall find. It shall be given you. Listen to this. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. That's Christ speaking. This is the Word of God. Maybe your experience is different than what the Word says, but maybe your experience is different than what the Word says because you're living different than what the Word says, or you're doing something different than what the Word says. But I'm going to tell you, on the authority of God's Word, ask, seek, and knock, you shall receive, the door shall be opened, you shall find. That's according to the word of God. Now when you knock and the door opens, what's on the other side of that door may not be what you expect it to be on the other side of that door. That's right. When you seek, it says you will find, but it doesn't say what you will find. When we ask, we shall receive, but it doesn't say what we will receive. And he goes on and he says, uh, how many of you that are a parent, uh, will, and your kid comes and asks you, uh, we'll just use uh, stuff we know about, if they come and ask you for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, how many of you give them a rock? 
If they come and ask you for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you might not say, no, I'm going to give you a bologna sandwich. You're going to give them good things, but it may not be the thing they asked for. Uh, remember, he said, ask, seek, and knock, and you'll get it. But he goes on and says, he will give you good things. Not necessarily always what we think we are to get. Uh, sometimes it is. Sometimes it is exactly what we ask for, what we pray for, and what we desire. You've all heard this. I've said it. you probably all said it. God answers prayer. But sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is wait. A lot of the time our problem is we're only hearing the answer we want to hear. If it's an answer other than what we want to hear, then we don't hear it. And if it's, we're asking for a specific thing to happen in a situation or a circumstance, if it doesn't happen the way that we wanted it to happen, then we don't recognize it as God working in our lives. But the point I want to make here before we move on is what I started out with, where he says, ask, seek, and knock. It's a continual thing. There are times when you may pray and nothing happens. You may pray and nothing happens. You may pray and nothing happens. But you keep on praying until something happens. And I know I've said this before. I don't believe that God will let you go on and on and on forever and not do or say something. And I use this... Uh, <coughs> example a lot where Paul had the thorn in his flesh and it said that he prayed three times. We well, prayed once and apparently nothing happened. He prayed twice and apparently nothing happened. He prayed the third time. God didn't remove the, the thorn from his flesh, but God answered. So we have to uh, learn to be persistent. We have to learn to persevere in our prayers. And there's many examples in the Bible. We're going to just look at a couple of things that I think uh, will really highlight what it is that uh, the point that we're trying to get across here this morning. We're going to go into Matthew chapter 15. And what God has shown me and what I want to try to give to you is some things that should be present in our prayers if we want to see God move. Some things that should be present if we want to see God answer. If we do want to knock and have it open, we do want to seek and find, and we do want to ask and have it given to us. In Matthew 15, then we're going to break in at verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And I'm going to back up and cover some things in here. Uh, and we're talking about prayer. Now, I know this woman uh, didn't kneel down and pray like we come and pray at the altar and that sort of thing. But what did she do? She went to Christ and asked for something. And that's what we're doing uh, when we pray for needs in our lives or we pray for others or whatever it is. Uh, the only difference is he was right there. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, he was no more present there than he is here. He is always here. He is always present. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so I'm going to look at this, how she approached him, and how she got an answer to what she was seeking. It said she came out of the coast and cried unto him. She cried unto him. And it, listen, words matter. And I know I say this a lot. Things are put in this word the way they are put in this word because we're supposed to get something from it. It doesn't just say she came and she asked him. 
It says she cried unto him. She cried out. Uh, she lifted up her voice, I believe, and cried out to him. Uh, there was something within her uh, that was breaking. There was something within her uh, that it was a deep-seated, deep-rooted desire to see that, an answer to this thing that she had sought after. She cried from the depths of her very heart. And we all know the scripture. Uh, a broken heart and a contrite spirit uh, that God will recognize. And I believe a lot of time uh, we don't have that. And I believe that that moves God. And I gave you that scripture and there's others that will back that up. But we need to come and really pour out of ourselves like this woman did. She cried unto him saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil, but he answered her not a word. How many times have you gone and cried out? How many times have you gone and prayed? And you did nothing. Silence. And you felt like your prayer didn't go. I've heard this saying, didn't go above your head. You felt like it just dropped to the ground. You felt like God didn't hear you. Or where is God? Or whatever. This is probably how this woman felt. She cried out to him. And he answered her not a word. Listen, if I, if I come to you and I'm asking you for something. And you don't even acknowledge me. You don't answer me. You don't even look at me. I'm going to think you didn't hear me. And a lot of time I think when we go to God in prayer or when we're seeking things or when we're asking for things or whatever it is and we get that response where I don't hear anything, I don't see anything, whatever, we think God didn't hear us. I'm going to guarantee you he hears you. Jesus heard this woman, but it says he answered her not a word. Not only that, but then his disciples came and said, send her away. Uh, how many times have you prayed? Felt like your prayer didn't go anywhere, felt like you weren't being heard. And then things start coming into your mind. Might as well forget it. God don't want you to have it. You might as well just forget it and move on. That ain't going to happen. This is just how your life is going to be. This is just how you're going to have to live. You're just going to have to put up with that. Well, God put that on you because somebody else couldn't handle it. Whatever it is that we tell ourselves, that's just like the disciples here in this case. Not only did they look to the woman like Christ didn't hear her and he didn't answer her or anything like that, but then there's these voices saying, just go away, just go away, just go away. And we do that. The flesh will do that to us. We will do that to ourselves. These things will rise up in us. But listen, and here's the thing. Uh, this woman didn't quit. She cried out. There was no response. Didn't look like she had been heard or seen. The disciples are saying, just send her away. Just send her away. Just send her away. But listen, she didn't quit. Listen to what it says. Then came she and worshipped him. We'll be touching on this in a little bit too, but what we call the Lord's Prayer, the model of the, that Christ gave. How does he start out? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Given God praise. Given God worship. Given God honor. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, with prayer and thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. A lot of time we just go and ask, 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 go and ask. This woman came, asked, nothing happened. Uh, the voices said, go away. Uh, then she didn't give up, she didn't quit. She went back and she worshiped him. She gave him what was due him. She gave him what he was worthy of. She came and worshiped him and saying, Lord, help me. She didn't quit. But even when she did that, the answer was, that's not for you. It's not me to give the children's bread to the dogs. That ain't for you. But she still didn't quit. Listen, it goes on. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Listen, no matter what happened, she didn't quit. There was no response. It was silence. It felt like she hadn't been seen or heard. The voices said, go away. When the answer came, the answer was, that's not for you. But she still didn't quit. And what happened in the end? Because she did not give up. Because she did not quit. Because she persisted. Her prayer was answered. Uh, the Lord healed her daughter. And he, sa he said this, O woman, great is thy faith.
be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And you all know this. And I don't got to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you this anyway. Without faith, you're not going to get anything. And when you pray that first time and nothing happens and you lose your faith, you might as well forget it. When you go back the second time and nothing happens, you might as well forget it if your faith quits. We have to persist and we have to keep the faith. How can I keep the faith if I don't see anything happen? If I'm not seeing things change, if I don't see the hand of God move, how can I keep the faith? You can keep the faith because the book tells you that this is what will happen. You can have faith because God said this is what will happen if you persist, if you don't give up, if you don't quit, and you just... Just walk away from it. God will answer. God will answer. According to the word, God will answer. And because the book says so, and because God cannot, does not, will not lie, you can believe it. You can keep your faith up until you get through, until God answers, until something happens. But we can't quit. And so many times, what we want to do is whether it be here or whether it be at home or, or wherever it's at, we want to come and mumble a little thing asking for something, and that's about all we do. We don't come crying out with a broken heart, with a contrite spirit. We don't come in faith believing. We don't come worshiping before him. We don't come in the manner that we should come. We don't ask in the manner that we should ask. And you may say, uh, well, I don't believe all that. I'm going to give you some more examples. And I really want you to hear these things. In the book of Matthew chapter 20, beginning at verse 29. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, again, listen, cried out, <coughs> saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Now listen, those two blind guys that were sitting there by the way, when Jesus passed by, when they knew it was Jesus passing by, it says they cried out. Do you think them two blind guys sitting there by the road and the, the multitude's going by, Jesus is going by, and there's all kind of stuff going on? Do you think they just sat there and said, I wish he'd heal me? They cried out. They had to lift their voices. They had to be heard. Uh, they wanted this thing bad from the depths of who they were. They wanted it, and they cried out. It says they cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. Again, uh, the voices started saying, and this is what we do. It happens to us. The voices start saying, he's not going to answer that. I'm just going to have to live like this. This is just how it is. It's never going to change. Whatever it is that begins to pop into your mind, the same thing's happening here. The voices are crying out. Uh, you might as well just quit. You might as well just give up. And he goes on and he says, because they should hold their peace, but they cried the more. When the voices rose up and started telling them to forget about it, give up on it, it ain't going to happen, this is how it's going to be, they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. And look, again, as with that woman, it begins by crying out. And when all the situation and all the circumstance and all the voices make it look like nothing's going to happen, you should just quit and go away. Cry more. And don't give up. And don't quit. Back to where we started. It says knock, seek, ask. And again, I want you to understand, that means persistently, that means continually, not just one time. 
If you have something very important you want to discuss with me, it's crucial. You have to discuss it with me. And you come to my house and you know I'm home. You have no doubt whatsoever in your mind that I'm home. My vehicle's there. You can hear things going on inside the house. You know I am there. And this thing you have to talk to me about, you have to talk to me about immediately. It's important. Uh, and you've got to get to me. Do you just come to my door and go, 